Interactivity has wide range of interpretations and applications. We have seen that interactivity term is used in many sense. Sometimes navigation is equated to interactivity and some experts have categorically said that this kind of navigation should not be considered as interactive material. To understand these different interpretations of interactivity, let us see some levels of interactivity defined by various experts. Dr. Perrin Donald has defined two levels of interactivity, lowest interactivity and highest interactivity. When a learner is given some questions just to choose correct, incorrect, when the goals are set and to achieve those predetermined set of goals or objectives, learners just interact with the material in terms of answering questions correct, incorrect, yes or no, whether this answer or that answer and learner moves linearly. This linear path leads that learner towards the set objectives. This can be lowest level of interactivity. Instead, if learner is involved in determining goals, setting goals, planning towards these goals, if the learner is controlling and determining his or her own progress so as to achieve these goals, then that will involve highest interactivity. At each design point here, the learner's action involves a unique and appropriate response and there are multiple paths to one goal or a set of goals. Professor Rory Magrill has defined three levels of interactivity, high level, medium level and low level. Let's see what he says about these three levels. Low level interactivity material is like an ebook or a web page. The learner is merely navigating in this kind of material. When the learner is accessing interactive multimedia package in terms of CI or if there is computer conferencing where teacher and learners can interact with each other, learner can ask questions, teacher can answer, then we can say that it is middle level interactivity. In high level interactivity, the learner is interacting with almost every piece of information, every content, every chapter. There is listserv, there are chats, there is continuous computer conferencing, simulated kind of environment may also be a part of this higher level interactivity. Dr. Quay has defined three levels of interactivity, navigational, functional and adaptive. Navigational level of any multimedia focuses on navigating through some material. There may be menu, search engines, some pages to proceed ahead and hyperlinking. This kind of interactivity is navigational interactivity. Functional interactivity is provided by a system which avails an environment to the learner. The learner needs to interact with this environment so as to accomplish some goals. Throughout this learning process, the learner is given feedback towards accomplishment of goals for every progress that is made by the learner. So we can say that goal may be winning as in the case of an online catalog. Throughout the interaction, the user receives feedback on their progress or lack thereof toward the goal. The highest level of interactivity is adaptive interactivity. It offers a far higher level of creative control to the user. It allows learner to adapt the application or information to fit to their goals and even to their personality. The intelligent hyper adaptive site would interact with the user and adapt itself to fit the user, readapting as the user's goals, knowledge or mindset change. We have seen that very highly interactive package would analyze the learner's characteristics, the learner's views, the learner's learning styles psychological characteristics, physiological characteristics and adapt to the learner. So when the package itself changes and tries to give individualized experience to every learner depending on the learner's characteristics and learning styles, we can say that the package is using adaptive mode and that is the highest level of interactivity. I would recommend you an article, Interactivity, a Forgotten Art 
by Dr. Roderick Sims. He has defined a few labels of interactivity which are really interesting. Let us see the labels. Object interactivity, linear interactivity, support interactivity, update interactivity, construct interactivity, reflective interactivity, simulation interactivity, hyperlinked interactivity, immersive virtual interactivity, non-immersive contextual interactivity. Object interactivity is a kind of proactive inquiry in which learner is provided with the environment in which there are many objects, say buttons, graphic persons. The learner is expected to click on these objects to bring in some different form or piece of information. Some multimedia elements get opened. You have seen many such buttons. When you click on the button, something pops up, something comes up. For example, if you are clicking on a person and person starts speaking, this kind of interactivity is known as object interactivity. When a particular package has a fixed sequence and the learner is just expected to move forward or backward by clicking on next button, it is known as linear interactivity. So, the learner is just proceeding ahead or coming back whenever needed to access every new piece of information. You can imagine that development of such a package is very easy task. This interactivity is easy to build. Sometimes there are some text messages which are for help support of the learner. There may be some complex tutorials also. So, if the learner needs any help support the learner accesses this information by clicking on some buttons or some objects. This kind of providing support, providing help, providing tutorials, interactivity is known as support interactivity. In update interactivity, dialogue is generated between learner and computer mediated instructional package. This kind of dialogue makes the learner react or take some action. The analysis of the learner's response results in computer generated update or feedback. Update interactivity can range from the simple question and answer format to complex conditional responses which may incorporate artificial intelligence components. Sometimes learners are given presented some problems in which learner needs to take some decisions and learners actions can generate a new knowledge. Now here the knowledge is updated not by computer but by learner's action. Planning is very important in development of such a package which is giving update interactivity to learners. The multimedia components results whatever are there after updating information by learners is very complex and quality of such material may affect the overall quality of these multimedia packages. Sometimes in light of objectives, so as to achieve goals, learners need to manipulate objects. When learner manipulates many components, it may reach to construct interactivity. Learner is creating something, learner is constructing environment, reorganizing some components of the environment. Imagine all games or activities where learners create or design their own circuit diagrams. Here learners are involved in construct interactivity. The components of circuits are managed, designed, associated by learners and they get the result thereafter. The result itself shows learner whether this construct interactivity is successful or not. Construct interactions require significantly more design and strategic effort. Only after learners strategic efforts, logical designing output can be provided. Now this construct interactivity can take learners to higher level that is simulated environments. So simulations can be managed by learners. The entire sim city or sim garden, simulated gardens can be constructed, devised by the learners. This class of interaction is also based on proactive elaboration and allows learner to respond in the form of type text. Can you imagine a situation where computer is asking questions, 
learner is typing answers and still learners get feedback. Automated feedback can be given by very concrete inputs already stored in the computer. But when it comes to writing long answers, we really need challenging programming. A set of predetermined answers can be stored. Those may be answers by experts. After typing answer, the learner is provided with the expert's answer and learner is told to compare expert's answer with the learner's answer. Here, learner is typing, giving response and then after reading expert's answer, reflecting on his or her own answers and that is why this is known as reflective interactivity. Simulation interactivity ranges from reactive elaboration to mutual elaboration. In reactive elaboration, the learner is simulating the environment, managing components and the components are just reacting. In mutual elaboration, the computer assisted package also gives some feedback in terms of actions. So whatever you are doing, you can directly see consequences. For example, if you are doing some science experiments, computer may not stop you, Com computer may allow you to complete that experiment even though you are doing wrong things. As a result, there may be explosion, there may be a fire, there may be a blast. And then the learner realizes that the learner has gone wrong. Now again the learner can try with different variables by changing quantity of some components, by reducing heat and then the learner arrives, reaches to the right parameters. So consequences are the learning experiences in such mutual elaboration. In construct interactivity, learner may construct the environment by using, deciding some variables and its parameters. And in simulation interactivity also, the same control and choice is given to learners. So in both levels of interactivity, decision making lies with the learners and the learner can see the consequences, the output. The interaction sequence can also be varied according to the specific instructional strategy required. Hyperlinked interactivity is actually proactive navigation. The learner travels through the path of knowledge. It is a maze through which the learner travels and accesses information. The provision of linked information can provide a means to present problems which are solved by correctly navigating through a maze of information. Now you may think about the designing of such an interactive package where everything is navigated, it is a maze of knowledge and it requires a lot of designing efforts. Now imagine a situation when you are not only experiencing this virtual world but you are part of that virtual world. Just imagine a fantasy that you have entered into altogether different era. You are not only seeking experience of that era, but you are acting in that era. And whatever you are doing, you are getting reactions. The virtual world is reacting to each and every performance given by you. So when learner can immerse into such environment, immersive virtual interactivity is created. It is the highest level of interactivity and experts think it is almost next to impossible to create such a complex world. But that is becoming possible now. Designing, creating such a high interactivity is very expensive, very strategic, very time consuming. But you can imagine the learning experience which learner will get if this kind of interactivity is provided to learners. A very high level of interactivity is non-immersive contextual interactivity. Contextual interactivity means an environment which is contextual. The entire context, the entire environment is created. It is a virtual learning environment. We can say it is virtual work environment. Instead of going into real work environment, the learner can enter into a computerized work environment and practice. 
there may be various variables. It is a replica created by modeling the entire environment and in this modeled environment learner practices. So, there is no risk. An enormous practice can be availed. Consequences of every task can be seen. Suppose you want to know about a complete environment, a complete context of a particular war. Then on computer, learner can enter into that war area, the war context and see, read, view, experience all happenings, all phenomena of that war period. This is non-immersive contextual interactivity. So, you have understood that there are various levels of interactivity. If you are instructional designer, if as an instructor you are writing content for multimedia, then you may think of very low level which provides just correct incorrect answers or maybe just navigational sequence where learner is moving and traveling through the world of knowledge. You may also plan some higher levels of interactivity such as construct interactivity, simulation interactivity. You may also think of update interactivity or support interactivity if you are developing material for software training. Depending on the set of objectives, depending on the target group you and most importantly the cost and design development efforts involved, you can select an appropriate level of interactivity.